Hello sixth graders, we are continuing on with unit four. Our lesson today is on multiplying fractions. Our learning target is I can multiply fractions and mixed numbers. Remember, make sure you have the title, the unit, and the learning target all written down in your notes or have the note template ready to go. Again, anytime you see this vocab word, make sure you get these words written down. So just some things to remember. Numerator is the top number in the fraction and it represents the part. The denominator is the bottom number in the fraction, and that re represents the whole. So in uh, four-fifths, the part is four. You have part of the five holes that the bottom is. Improper fraction, the top number is bigger than the bottom number. This represents more than one whole. So again, this is like ten-eighths is an example of that. Mixed number. Um, is a whole number with a fraction. This is the simplified form of an improper fraction. So this uh, 10 a's would become 1 and 2 a's as a mixed number, and then that would simplify. But mixed number, whole number with a fraction. So have those words written down. Examples are good too. Okay, so multiplying fractions. Let's write this part right here that I'm starring, let's write that down. To multiply fractions, all you need to do is multiply numerators, multiply the denominators. And this is important over here, so make sure you write this part down as well. You do not have to have common denominators to multiply. All you do, multiply numerators, multiply denominators. So have that start part written down and the part that I just put in the green box. An example of this, one half, um, I'm looking at this part here, one half times two thirds. You just do one times two for the top numbers, two times three for the denominators, okay? And that will get you your answer. So we have one half times one third. Again, I don't need a common denominator. Let's write this example down. So I just multiply the numerators. Well, one times one is one. Multiply denominators, two times three is six. So my answer is one sixth, and then I would simplify that. This is showing us over here what exactly that means. So this one half is the blue part. Um, the one third is the, the top part. And so then the part where they overlap, what they share is that one sixth. So that's how we find our answers. Another important note here that we should write down is when we have whole numbers. When we are multiplying a fraction by a whole number, we write the whole number as a fraction by putting the denominator as 1. So whole numbers can always be written as fractions um, by putting them over 1. So what that means is we would do 2 over 1 times 3 fourths. 2 over 1 is still equal to 2, I'm just rewriting it in fraction form. Now multiply numerators, 2 times 3 is 6. Multiply denominators, 1 times 4 is 4. Let's turn that into a mixed number. We have an improper fraction, so four goes into six. One whole time with two fourths left over, I can simplify and make that one and one half, which is what um, this visual is showing. Taking our two, multiplying it by three fourths, if we take three fourths of each of those twos, um, we end up with one and a half that's shaded in green. Okay, so we'll try these practice problems. If you're feeling comfortable, go right ahead and then just um, check your answers with me. Otherwise, follow along here. Three-fifths times one-half. Again, do not find a common denominator. Multiply numerators, multiply denominators. So three times one is three. Five times two is ten. That's already in simplest form, so our answer is three-tenths. Next one, one-third times three-fourths. Multiply tops, multiply bottoms. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 4 is 12. These can simplify by dividing the top and bottom by 3. So that would be 1 over 4 in simplest form. Last one on here, 2 thirds times 4. Remember, whole numbers we're going to put over 1. So we have 2 thirds times 4 over 1. Multiply numerators. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 1 is 3. Don't leave it as an improper fraction. Let's make it into a mixed number. So three goes into eight two times, which would be six. So that means there's two thirds left over and that's already in simplest form. 
Now there's something that we can do called cross canceling, which actually makes it easier for us to multiply and um, can save us some simplifying in the end. So in this example here, I'm gonna zoom in. I would write this down. We had 11 twelfths times 26 over 55. So what they did was they cross canceled. What that means is they looked at the numbers that were diagonal from each other and they looked to see if there was anything that they both could be divided by. So 11 and 55, those are both divisible by 11. So what they did was they crossed this out and they um, simplified it. So 11, or divided, 11 divided by 11 is one. And over here, 55 divided by 11 is five. Then they went and looked at the other diagonal, 12 and 26. Those are both divisible by two. So they divided both of them. So 26 divided by two is 13. 12 divided by two is six. Now they don't share, they can't be divided anymore. So then what they do is they take those new numbers, one times 13 and six times five. That's what they multiply. And they get their answer of 13 over 30, which is in simplest form, can't divide it anymore. And it makes the multiplication a whole lot easier. Because otherwise, if we go back to that original problem, if we would have had to multiply 11 times 26, and then 12 times 55, it would have been a little tricky to do. So doing these cross canceling makes it a lot easier for us in the end. So we're gonna do some examples and we're gonna practice this. It might feel a little weird at first, but keep giving it a try, you'll get better at it as you practice more. So 2 sevenths times 3 eighths, I'm just rewriting it a little bit bigger so I have some space to work. So I look at the diagonals. I'm gonna start with the two and the eight. They are diagonal from each other. I know they're both divisible by two. So two divided by two is one, so I'm gonna cross it out and make it a one. Eight divided by two is four. Now the three and seven, those can't be divided at all. So my cross canceling is done. Now I multiply, one times three is three, seven times four is 28 makes my multiplication a little easier, and um, the simplifying as well. So 3 28 I think that's in simplest form. So there's my final answer. If you didn't do the cross-canceling, hopefully we'd end up with the same answer. You would just have to multiply bigger numbers and then simplify more at the end. So now I want you to try these next three, and I want you to try um, the cross-canceling. So 1 3rd times three sevenths. Um, on the threes, those can both be divided by three. Three divided by three is one. And the one and seven, those can't be cross canceled at all. So now we can just multiply. One times one is one. One times seven for the denominators is seven. And that's in simplest form. Next one, four ninths times one eighth. Again, let's practice cross canceling. The four and the eight, those are both divisible by two. Four divided by two is two, and eight divided by two is four. Now I see two and four, I can divide those again by two. Two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two. So you can divide multiple times, or if I had just started with four from the beginning, I would have only had to divide once. One and nine, um, those can't be divided by anything, so now we can just multiply. Multiply my numerators. So I have, I'm gonna rewrite this here for a little neater. So 1 ninth times 1 half, 1 times 1 is 1, 9 times 2 is 18, and that's in simplest form. Last one, 5 six times 3 fifths. 5 and 5 diagonal from each other. Those can be divided by 5, so 5 divided by 5 is 1, 5 divided by 5 is 1. Looking at the other diagonal, this time I can divide those ones as well. Three and six are both divisible by three. So three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. So my new numbers that I have here are one half times one over one. Well, anything times one, I just know is gonna be itself, but we'll still follow our steps here. Multiply numerators, one times one is one, and two times one is two, and that is in simplest form. So cross canceling makes it easier to multiply and usually helps us to have, um, we get to skip simplifying in the end because we did it before we multiplied. Okay, so now we have when we're multiplying mixed numbers, which we should write down these steps. 
Number one, simplify fractions if necessary. Change any mixed numbers to improper fractions. That's the big one. Make mixed numbers improper fractions first. Put any whole numbers um, over one. Cross cancel if you can, and then we can multiply. So we pretty much have to make them all either fractions or improper fractions. So one half times four and two fifths. I'm gonna start by um, turning that four and two fifths into a improper fraction. So again, to do that, I'm gonna multiply and add. So five times four is 20, plus two is 22 over five. Keep the one half. Now I can cross cancel on this one. The two and the 22 are both divisible by two. Two divided by two is one. Uh, 22 divided by two is 11. And now we can multiply. One times 11 is 11. One times five is five. Make that into a mixed number. Five goes into 11 two whole times with one fifth left over. And that's in simplest form. Okay, make it an improper fraction first and then multiply as normal. Okay, feel free to pause and try these ones on your own. If you're not quite ready, follow along with me. Either way, you should have these all written down in your notebook. One fourth times eight and four ninths. Turn this mixed number into an improper fraction. Nine times eight is 72 plus four would be 76 over nine. Keep the one fourth as it is. Uh, four and 76, those are both divisible by two. I'm gonna start with that. So four divided by two is two. And 76 divided by two is 38. Looks like I can simplify again by dividing by two one more time. Two divided by two is one. 38 divided by two is 19. So now we have one over one times 19 over nine. Multiply numerators, one times 19. Multiply denominators, one times nine. And improper, so let's make that back into a mixed number. Nine goes into 19 two full times, which would be 18, which leaves one ninth left over, and that's already in simplest form. Next one, five and one-thirds times three. Turn this into an improper fraction. Three times five is 15, um, sorry, plus the one would be 16 over three. Whole numbers we put over one, so three over one. I can cross cancel, these are both divisible by three. Multiply numerators, 16 times one is 16. One times one is one. If I'm left with a whole number over one like that, um, then it's just my numerator. So 16 is my answer on that one, which makes sense because five times three is 15 and five and one third is a little bit more than 15. So my answer should be a little higher than that. And last one here, we've got one and seven eighths times two and two fifths. Start by making both of these into improper fractions. So eight times one is eight, plus seven is 15 over eight. Turn this into an improper fraction. Five times two is 10, plus two is um, 12 over five. Look for those shortcuts, which I see are cross canceling. These are both divisible by five. Five divided by five, 15 divided by five. And these are both divisible by four. 8 divided by 4 is 2, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Now I can multiply, 3 times 3 is 9, 2 times 1 is 2. Improper fraction, so let's turn it back into a mixed number. 2 goes into 9, 4 whole times, which would be 8, which leaves 1 half left over, so 4 and a half. So we have a couple word problems here. The first one, humans sleep one third of each day. If each year is equal to 365 and one quarters a day, determine the number of days in a year the average human sleeps. Um, one thing to note, that word of, if you see that, so one third of something, that usually means that we are multiplying. So one third of 365 and one fourth days means that we are going to multiply. 
which we have all the work over here. I'm not going to go through all of it. You can follow along on the steps. We're taking one third times 365 and one fourth. Following those same steps, making that mixed number improper, shortcuts, multiply, and then turn our answer back into a mixed number. So that means the average human sleeps 121 days, 121 and three quarters days per year. Let's try this one together. Sophie, Sophia wishes to make one half of a recipe, okay, of a recipe. Um, if the original recipe calls for three and three quarters cups of flour, how much cups should she use? So I'm gonna be taking one half of the amount of flour, which means multiply. So one half times three and three fourths. Let's turn this into an improper fraction. So we end up with one half times, four times three is 12, plus three is 15 over four. Um, I don't see any shortcuts on here. One and four aren't divisible, two and 15 are not. So we can just multiply one times 15, two times four. Let's turn that back into a mixed number. Eight goes into 15 one whole time with seven eighths left over. Um, it's a word problem, so our answer should have a label. So that means that she should use one and seven eighths cups of flour. Okay, again, here's your steps. Not a bad idea to write them down again. Um, they're kind of condensed a little bit more. So steps for multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. Change mixed numbers to improper fractions. Put any whole numbers over one. Um, you do not need common denominators. And then you just multiply numerators, multiply denominators, and simplify. And I always recommend looking for those shortcuts. Okay, so we've got here some you-do problems that I want you to try in your notebook. One-fifth times seven. Six times one and three-fourths. Two and one-fourths times three and a half. I'm not gonna go through these with you right now. I want to see that you have tried them on your own. So I will be looking to see that these are completed when I check your notes. Um, so make sure you get these done as well. Give them your best try. So that's it for multiplying fractions. Look back over your notes, make sure you have everything done and completed that you need. Check your understanding. Is this something that you could explain to somebody else? If not, go back and rewatch the parts that you're still stuck or confused on. Um, you can always do some practice problems and then come to class with your notes ready and prepared.